What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to disable and delete menu items with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, I'm going to show you how to disable and delete menu items. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is Monday morning here in Vegas. Hope you guys had a good weekend. I had a pretty good weekend here. And it, like I said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to delete and disable menu items in Kinter. So we've got a menu, we've got new and open, we've got a couple of items in our menu. If we want to disable it, we can click here. And now you can see this new is disabled, right? You can't click on it anymore. If we want to delete, new completely, we can click here, and now new disappears. Now this is useful for a lot of different reasons. And it's a little trickier than you might think. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's head over to our sublime text editor, I'm using sublime text and the git bash terminal as always, I've got a file called delete underscore menu dot I've got our basic Kinter starter code 500 by 500 as we always do. So let's start right off the bat by creating a menu real quick. And it's Monday morning, I'm a little bit lazy, I'm just going to paste this in. So this is our basic menu code that we always have, I'm going to call it my underscore menu, it's going to be a menu, we want to put it in root, then we root config set our menu to my menu. Now we can add menu items. And let's just create a thing that says file, I'm going to call it file menu. And this is going to be in menu, we want it to be in my underscore menu, that's the menu. And let's put tear off equals false. If you remember the tear off is when you click on it, there's three little there, there's a bunch of little dots, usually that's the tear off, we don't want that. So I'll just set tear off to false. And now we can my underscore menu dot add cascade. And let's create a label. And remember, this is a lowercase l. I know it looks uppercase, but that's just sublime doing its thing. And we want this one to be file. And let's give this a menu equals file menu. All right, so we've added our little file menu sub menu to our main menu, we've labeled it file. So let's add drop down items, whatever you want. So let's go file underscore menu dot add underscore command. And let's add a label of new. And remember, again, this is a lowercase l, right? And let's give this a command of uh, let's just, just call this new. And so real quick up here, I'm going to create a function called new, we don't really want this to do anything. So I'll just pass. And let's also create another one called open while we're at it. And I'll just pass this one too. Okay, so we've got new, let's copy this and paste another one in here. And let's have this one say open. And we want this command to be open. Okay, so that should do for our basic menu. So let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure that worked. So let's go Python, delete underscore menu dot pi. And when we do we get this file, we click on it, it says new and open, we can click on either of these things, but they don't do anything because our function just passes, we, we're not, we haven't programmed it to actually do anything. And okay, we're good to go. So now let's create a button or two. So let's call this one uh, disable underscore button. And when this is going to be a button, we we'll want to put it in root, we want the text to equal disable new. So we want to disable the new thing here, this new drop down menu item. And let's give this a command of disable underscore new. Copy this. And let's go disable underscore button dot pack. And let's give this a pad y of like 50 to really push it down the screen. Okay, so now let's come up here. And let's define disable new. And let's come with this uh, disable the new menu item. Okay, so what we want to do here is just disable it, we want it to still be there, we don't want to delete it, we just want to bank it to where you can't click on it, it's disabled, right. And you can disable and enable most widgets by setting their state to either disabled or normal, normal is default for every widget a normal widget just works. If you want to sort of turn it off, you set its state to disabled. If you want to turn it back on, you set the state back to normal, right. So we could do that. 
with our uh, file menu, right? By calling file menu dot entry config. And this is a little different. We haven't actually seen entry config before, but for menu items, you use entry config. And then what do we want to call? Well, we want to work on the one that has a label of new. So kind of strangely, we would just put new in there and that works. Kinter can figure out, oh, in the file menu, the one with a label of new, that's the one we want to mess with. And what do we want to do? Well, we want to set the state to disabled. And that's it. All right. So that should work. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. So we've got file new and open. We click disable new. Now we come up here and new has been disabled. Very cool, right? If we wanted to enable it again, we could. We could create a new button here. So let's call this. Actually, I'm just going to copy this whole thing. Paste this in. Let's give this a pad Y of like 10. And instead of disable, I'm going to call this ena enable. I want to enable it. Turn it back on. And let's say enable. And instead of disable new, let's call this enable new, right? So we can come up here and create, and let's say uh, enable the new menu item. So let's define enable new. And here I'm just gonna copy this whole thing. And instead of disabled, I'm gonna turn it back to normal, right? So let's save this and run it. And we have it's working just fine. We can disable it. Now you can see it's been sort of grayed out. It's been disabled. Now we can enable it, come back here, and it's back again. We can click it again. So that's how to disable a menu item. Very simple. You could do the same thing with the whole menu if you wanted to. Uh, so we could come back here. And instead of file menu, we could change this to my menu. And instead of new, we could change this to file. If we save this and run it. and click this, boom, you see now the entire file menu itself gets grayed out and we can't click on it at all. I'm clicking my mouse right now, you probably can't tell, but I am, and nothing is happening. We can't enable it because we haven't, we could enable it again, but we'd have to change the code right here to file menu, from file menu to my menu, and then change this to file, and that would enable it again. But uh, that's easy, so I'm gonna change this back to file. Okay, so that's how we change the state, that's how we disable and enable it. How do we delete it completely? Well, let's come down here, let's create another button. Let's say delete underscore new. And this is gonna be a button, we wanna put it in root, we want the text to equal delete new. And let's give this a command of delete underscore new. And let's change this to delete new underscore button so that this name and this command don't conflict, right? So. All right, so let's go delete new button dot pack. Give this a pad Y of 20, push it down the screen a little bit. Now you can come up here and let's say delete new menu item. And let's define this, delete new. And this is actually a little bit easier. We just call file underscore menu, which is the, the menu that has the command, this new command that we want to delete. So we call file underscore menu dot delete, and then we just pass in what we want to delete. So here again, we're going to use the label, which in my mind is a little weird. It's just a label, but Kinter knows what that is when we call that new label, and it will delete it. So let's go ahead and save this. Head back over here, run this guy one more time. We see file new and open. We can click delete new. Now when we click it again, new is gone completely, and that's cool. So pretty simple to uh, disable, enable, and delete menu items. Again, you know, it's a little bit weird because we're using labels to designate what's what, but I guess you would because there's nothing else really to designate. Uh, we can close this. We can head back over here if we really wanted to and fiddle with this. And instead of file menu, we could go my menu. And instead of new, we could delete file, which is, right, it's this guy right here in my menu, the main menu. If we save this and ran it, 
boom, the entire menu disappears and that's how you delete the entire menu. So kind of cool. I'm going to change this back to just the file menu and that's how you do it. So a quick little video this Monday morning uh, playing around with menus. I've got a couple of requests about this in the past, so I figured we'd knock this out. It's pretty simple. The only weird thing is this entry config, which we haven't really seen before. And like I said, using labels to designate these is, in my mind, a little weird, but I guess, you know, whatever. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeme.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 on memberships. So they pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeme.com, and I'll see you in the next video.